my name is Osama, and I'm an Ant Plus Applications Engineer. Uh, most of my work on the Ant Plus team is involved around creating Ant Plus device profiles which are interoperable and just creating the standards of how wireless communication is done between different Ant devices. So um, both adding new Ant Plus device profiles and then adding new features as well to our existing device profiles. So uh, currently, uh, over the past year, we've had a lot of traction with our fitness equipment device profiles. Um, I think it's one of our fastest growing ones in terms of certified products over the past year. And this it will be a technical overview of um, what our options are, what Ant Plus solutions are available in the market right now for fitness equipment devices, as well as wearables and apps that want to communicate with these devices, um, just to give a better user experience and to add value in products. So just a quick agenda of what I'll be covering in my 30 minute presentation. Just starting with an introduction of Ant Plus and fitness equipment, what kind of values and what the actual user experience is of having Ant Plus wireless interoperability in fitness equipment devices. And then I'll go into the actual two device profiles that we've defined for this use case as well. And then kind of try to answer the question, which profiles you should use for your product. And then actually go into the group use case of fitness equipment devices, how Ant Plus allows for um, group training as well and just enhances the gym and fitness club experience as well. And then I'll finish off with Ant Plus development tools and resources. So what we have available in terms of platforms, uh, development tools, just to ease the development of these popular device profiles into products as well as apps. And then followed by, uh, my presentation will be followed by Rick Gibbs from North Pole Engineering who works a lot with gym infrastructure of adding just wireless functionality to gym devices. So he'll go more into the group use case and the, te and the technical background required for wireless capability in gyms. So um, just the values of wireless interoperability. For, uh, just for users, um, going through what users get out of having the data from their fitness equipment devices available to them on their devices. So first, they get access to everything that's measured and computed by their devices. So like treadmills, stationary bikes, bicycle trainers, what, what actually, um, how they're doing in terms of fitness, how their performance is, and what they can improve on based on those parameters. They also get the value of social connectivity. So um, the fact that their data is now available to them on different platforms, they can upload them, share them, and then also uh, add workouts as well. And then finally, they have the choice. Interoperability allows for a choice of software applications as well as wearables. And they can just make sure, like they have a list of, on our directory of which devices are compatible with their fitness equipment devices. And they can pick and choose whichever works best for them. And then for fitness equipment manufacturers, um, of course, you guys have the, the added compatibility of every certified Ant Plus device out there as well, supporting these device profiles. Um, you have the possibility of, now that the data is live and off the machine, you have the possibility of adding new subscription-based services for fitness equipment devices. And then finally, um, the value of Ant Plus in almost all of, our, all the, all of the products, which is just advanced, um, I guess accelerated uh, integration into the market just because you already have devices that are compatible out there. And then um, for gyms and fitness clubs, they get, they get to track what their members are doing in terms of performance and then usage of machines. Um, you can add, they can add interactive values in terms of um, like this, the leaderboards that we saw in the product showcase yesterday through North Pole Engineering, as well as um, just they have the, a list of the directory which allows them to just let their members know which devices will be compatible. So there's no confusion. The customers get a value of um, certified devices which are guaranteed to work with the fitness equipment devices in the gym. And now going into the Ant Plus device profiles themselves. So this is the FE device profile. It uses the, uh, the FIT acronym, but we actually call it the Fitness Equipment Device Profile, not to be confused with the FIT file format. And um, this one was released in 2009, and the, per the objective of this device profile was to integrate the personal area network that, at, that Ant created and kind of integrate that into the gym or home fitness equipment environment. So just adding your fitness equipment device to the gym uh, sorry, adding your fitness equipment device to your personal area network as well, in addition to the body-worn sensors that you already have. And then the certified uh, devices we have these, um, up to now are treadmills, stationary bikes, uh, elliptical machines, <coughs> rowers, as well as uh, a lot of fitness watches which support this device profile. And those are just some of the brands which have been certified to date. And I guess the, the objective and what Ant Plus, uh, the FE device profile achieved was interoperable performance data exchange. So it allowed for uh, wearable platforms to get the data off the machine. 
And now, uh, over the past year, we released the FEC device profile. So this was actually released in 2014 to our members, and now it's available to all and plus adopters. This added, um, this was initiated by bicycle trainer manufacturers, which, uh, which indicated to us that the FE device profile didn't meet the exact needs for their fitness equipment devices. So we, um, we released the FEC device profile based on their needs. And certified devices to date include bicycle trainers, um, cycling simulation software, like you guys saw yesterday with KinoMap and uh, Vcool, and also uh, by computers like the Edge 520, which have adapted this device profile to allow you to control your trainers as well. So some of the certified, um, I guess, software and trainers that have been certified to date are just Be Cool, uh, Tax, the Neo, which won the Amplus Award for uh, best product, and also Kingdom Map software, as well as uh, Maximum Trainer. Now, uh, going into the FE device profile, kind of the technical aspects of this one. Um, this will be kind of technical, but also focus on the use case as well for uh, the commercial side of this device profile. Um, just a use case. It was always a user-centered use case, so the, the, the interaction that we designed this around was that the user would bring up their wearable or their app to the fitness equipment console, and then that's how they would pair based on physical proximity to allow, uh, to I guess, to avoid cross-pairing in a crowded environment. And the accessory would pro provide like the user information um, to the treadmill or to the fitness equipment device just so they could um, just, just so that the trainer could actually have access to all that information in case they wanted to modify the workout or calculate, um, I guess, advanced pr parameters. And the functional components, like the actual technical components that allow this device profile are like physical proximity based pairing. Um, and then de a dedicated broadcast channel. So this broadcast channel is only established after the user has brought up their watch to the console. And then they're only able to receive from that fitness equipment device. And then finally, um, the requirements for this device profile were to have, I guess, uh, easy pairing in the crowded environments and then just a maintained reliable one-to-one -one connection with the wearable device as well. So the technical components is going through these again. Um, physical proximity-based pairing, a dedicated broadcast channel which only broadcasts to the user's device, and then finally, uh, managed zones. So these aren't the heart rate zones that we usually refer to, but these are uh, managed physical zones around the fitness equipment device, so where the user is relative to the console of the device. So managing those allowed us to create a more interactive use case for the user. So um, just one of the so one of the advantages of the FP device profile was that it allowed for um, coexisting personal area networks on fitness equipment devices that wouldn't collide with each other, wouldn't provide interference, and it would be easier, easy for users to to pair as well as maintain that connection. So um, if all machines are being used, then a, a device wouldn't be able to pair to any of them because it's an established one-to-one -one dedicated broadcast channel and no one else is able to pair to that channel because it doesn't know the channel ID. Once the device becomes available, it's, you're able to pair to it if you bring your device up to the console for proximity pairing. And then um, all of our devices, all of the certified devices that support the FE device profile have the Plus link here logo. So this indicates that the user bring up their device within a few centimeters of the console just so they are the targeted pairing uh, device to the fitness equipment device. And once they're close enough, the two devices are paired. Um, any user information that has to be exchanged is sent over um, AntFS, which is an Ant file share pro uh, pro protocol. And then this includes like the accessory pairing information for the dedicated broadcast channel, as well as um, user info. Um, if they have a heart rate strap, you can pass the pairing information for that as well. And then uh, a workout file if you haven't already set a workout that can be automated on the treadmill or the stationary bike. Now, kind of going into more information about the dedicated broadcast channel. So this is a separate channel from the AntFS channel, which is used for pairing. And it's only established once the proximity pairing has been completed. So, um, and only the wearable and the fitness equipment device are, are, aware, are aware of the channel ID. So um, it allows for a dedicated uh, connection between uh, just the user and the fitness equipment device. So no one else can really listen in. And just the streaming data, so it's a four hertz channel and it allows for real-time and plus sensor-like data. Um, some of the common data just shows up there, elapsed time, speed and distance, which is common between treadmills, uh, ellipticals, and different devices. And then we also have equipment-specific messages defined as well, so specific for treadmills, stationary bikes, uh, rowers as well. And then finally going to the managed physical zones around a device. So um, there's 
uh, there's both the pairing zone and then the tracking zone. So the pairing zone is what is used to initialize the dedicated broadcast channel, and then the tracking zone um, is established uh, is is to maintain connection with the user. If even if they step out for like a, a glass of water or if they want to take a break off of the treadmill, they can still maintain that connection uh, using the tracking zone. And now just um, going into the FEC device profile. Um, so this was one that was released this year, and um, it has a, dif a different set of requirements from the FE device profile. So the FE device profile required for a defined pairing procedure to always have that consistent user experience of a crowded gym and you're able to pair with your device at all times. Um, it defined the message formats for just sending across performance data for different devices. And then it also defined uh, optional file sharing. So like a user profile or a workout, um, just so that could be sent across during handshaking and the, both devices would be on the same page. For the FEC device profile, we had a different set of requirements um, where it was initiated by bicycle trainer manufacturers. So they actually wanted like a flexible pairing experience. They wanted to be able to define it themselves uh, on the application level. And then um, they also wanted the open broadcast option. So how all AMPLA sensors are multi -broadcast, inherently multi-broadcast. So um, you could have multiple displays potentially listening into the same fitness equipment device. And one of the major additions were the wireless control commands, which were added. So to allow you to control the intensity of your workout using an AND plus display device. And then um, finally, like the new message requirements that were added for new device types. So for trainers, we added new messages on by reporting bicycle power, speed, and cadence. And, and then also exchanging user profile, and profile information over the broadcast channel as well. So the FEC use case. So it is, it's a broadcast-like pairing experience where Anybody who knows the channel ID can pair to the device. And we, of course, have our different um, pairing options for AMP Plus, which are uh, proximity pairing, entering the channel ID manually, um, RSSI as well. And then file exchange is not required. So, users, uh, so application developers as well as manufacturers don't have to add um, the, the complexity of a file exchange service. And then uh, you can have multiple displays. So both the personal area and then expanding it to the group area network in the gym. So having someone listen to multiple trainers or fitness equipment devices at the exact same time. And also a real time control command. So the user can change the resistance or the intensity of the workout using a simulation software or a wearable device. So it really increases the interaction you can have with your workout and just adds, adds basically a new use case to the fitness equipment device profile that was originally there. And then the two technical components of this device profile are the open broadcast channel and then the control commands, which are sent on the back channel of the AND plus FEC device profile. So this is a, a diagram that shows the FEC open broadcast channel. So you can have potential uh, multiple displays listening to the FEC channel at the exact same time. So over here we have a, a bike computer, a tablet from a coach, and also like a group, uh, a group listening service. Um, which broadcasts it over another protocol like Wi-Fi to, to a central system. And just the, having an open broadcast channel is just minimal uh, development effort for apps and wearables. Um, multiple display support, so all of these different types of devices you can add and listen in and control at the exact same time. And then going into the other technical component, which is the control commands themselves. So right now, these have been defined for the bicycle trainer use case, so, and also, I guess, a bit for the stationary bike use case as well. So they're acknowledged and commands, so the, the sender always knows when the message has been received by the trainer device. So uh, if you're a watch sending a command, you would know that the trainer actually received it, and it's able to implement it for the user. And currently, we have three defined modes. So we have basic resistance, um, target power, and then the simulation mode as well. So um, basic resistance just allows you to control um, the electronic resistance on a trainer for like up to 100%, so the maximum applicable resistance at a certain time. Target power, which allows you to just set the target power in watts, so what the user has to meet. And finally, simulation mode. So this is what is used by um, simulation software of sending actual like parameters like frontal surface area, um, the friction of the road, the wind resistance, and everything that actually applies. And then the trainer can calculate the, the I guess, the applied resistance itself to avoid, um, sorry, to avoid any, uh, to, I guess, to tailor the simulation to its own uh, hardware. And then uh, the FEC group use case. So I'm um, just, now that the, it's an open broadcast channel, it allows you to um, collect data from multiple trainers at the exact same time and assign 
each channel ID of a specific trainer device to a user. So um, kind of like the scoreboard op, uh, applications that we saw in the product showcase yesterday. And it also allows for individualized control. So it allows the group training um, system to also control the resistance on each specific trainer itself. So um, you can make it easier for some users and harder for the more advanced ones. And now just going into a bit more detail about the Anpla solutions and tools that we have available um, for the FE and FEC device profiles. So we have the FIT module series, which kind of integrated um, the FE device profile, the multiple ant channels that it uses into a single module, as well as allowing optional custom channels um, for, to, to expand your use case for your device. Um, we also have the Amplus Android plugins, which support both of these device profiles for Android devices, making development a minimal effort for developers. Um, we also have Connect IQ, which supports custom AND channels, and with 1.2 being announced, um, also supports customizable AND channels on edge, edge devices as well. So um, really, you can just expand the FEC use case and tailor applications towards your device from uh, on the Connect IQ platform as well. And then finally, we have the Amplus Technical Working Group for uh, fitness equipment devices. So um, if you have a fitness equipment device idea or if you feel like the profile is lacking in any area, you can add features and um, you can, I guess, request features for the technical working group to add to the device profile. And so that's always welcoming new members as well as new ideas from anyone who's um, expanding their product line. And then finally, we have the software tools like the Simulant Plus and then the Ant Plus fitness, equip fitness equipment tool, which allow you to simulate just on a PC software without having to buy an actual treadmill or a fit, uh, trainer to bring into your office. You can just use our simulation software with an Ant USB stick to simulate them to develop apps or uh, wearables. So yeah, so the, uh, the Ant Plus uh, Android SDK it supports both the FEC and FE device profile. Um, the proximity pairing procedure is handled at the plugin layer, so it's really minimal development effort for any, anybody who wants to create an app for the FE device profile. And then for, um, for the FEC, it allows for up to eight concurrent channels, so you have potential group control for small teams on, at, on a tablet, and you can even expand that if you add an Ant USB stick uh, and just add um, eight more channels just to keep it going and have everything on an Android tablet. It's an event and, it's a event and command based API. So you really get to, um, just, you just get an event every time you receive data and that's calculated and computed for you. And then you can just trigger, uh, just use methods to send out commands to um, the trainers as well. And currently just a list of the supported um, and Android, uh, sorry, supported uh, mobile platforms we support Android natively. I'm oh, sorry, we support Ant Plus natively. So just Samsung, um, HTC, Sony, Sharp, and Fujitsu. Um, the, Ant, the Ant Fit module series, so right now at Fit 2 is the latest module which has been released. And Fit 1E is also available right now as well. So this minimizes development effort for fitness equipment manufacturers. So you can, um, like I said, the proximity pairing is handled uh, by the module. So it's, it's kind of like a minimal effort for um, people who want to integrate fit the FE device profile into their consoles. And then um, it also handles proximity pairing for heart rate uh, straps. So you can just, you have the same link here, uh, user experience for heart rate straps as well. So they can just bring their, their strap or their um, wrist or arm worn sensor up to the console and just have that automatically pair. And it also manages the pairing and tracking zones throughout the workout so that the linking and the tracking zones, which, were, uh, which I showed in the diagram earlier, those are managed by the, the module itself. And then you have up to four custom ant channels to collect data from additional body-worn ant sensors. So um, like an example here is where they have different ant plus sensors all transmitting to the console device at the same time. So you have bike, the uh, bike speed and cadence monitor, a bike power meter, a uh, muscle oxygen sensor, um, all paired to the fitness equipment device as well. And then um, one of the really cool uses you have with um, these custom channels is you can open a FEC or open broadcast channel as well. So for FE, uh, on the FIT module, if you're implementing the FE device profile, you can also implement part of the FEC device profile. So that allows you to broadcast to, so to openly broadcast to group uh, displays as well. So anybody who has a group training system implemented, you can make your device compatible using the FIT module as well. And yeah, so just like the, the linking and tracking zones for a stationary bike, so these are managed by the FIT module as well. Kind of, um, I guess, easing the development effort on your part for the um, fitness equipment console. And then Connect IQ, 
um, both 1.0 and 1.2 allowed for the, um, I guess, one to, and now many and plus custom channels. So you can have the FEC device profile on Connect IQ 1.0, and now 1.2 allows you to add the FE device profile as well. So just customized apps for your uh, fitness equipment devices. And now that you have up to eight customizable and plus channels, you can have up to eight and, and plus FEC device profile channels on one watch as well. So you can control up to eight trainers at the exact same time. And then the fitness equipment TWG. So this is kind of like uh, one of our biggest resources in terms of gathering ideas and creating this interoperable standard is we have up to 20, uh, more than 20 um, active industry part participants. So um, just manufacturers of all different kinds people who, who develop uh, bike computers, fitness equipment, watches, um, and then also people like uh, Rick from North Pole who developed like the gym infrastructure for, um, for different fitness clubs, and then also app developers and then people who actually create the fitness equipment devices like rowers, um, treadmills, ellipticals, and stationary bikes. So we, um, you guys are always welcome to forward us ideas or um, propose new features to the AMP Plus device profiles, and then the FE device profile is always growing, and we've always had um, new ideas even up to now um, proposed for different kinds of devices. So we're always open to that and um, we always comp consider backwards compatibility um, when adding new features. So it's really a well-defined process that has worked for us very well in the, very well in the past. So um, we look forward to your ideas and if you guys want to contact me or ask me any questions, feel free to do that. So that's basically my presentation. Um, if you guys have any like, specific questions, you can ask me later on. And um, if you have any questions about the TWG itself, of how to, I guess, send us ideas or how to contact me, you can ask uh, me or Sebastian for contact information and just email us or call us anytime. Thank you.